All right, so let's first cover a few housekeeping items before going into today's agenda. Today's session is being recorded. The recorded version of the webinar will be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. We will also make copies of the slides available to those who registered for the event. With over 150 people registered for today's session, we have put all participants in listen-only mode. You can enjoy the audio portion of today's event by either streaming it on your computer or by dialing in over the phone. Today's presentation follows a logical flow. After introducing our guests, we'll go over some background information on both SharePoint and Business Grade FileSync. We will then talk about the factors MSP should be considering when choosing a document management solution for their clients. Next, I will introduce eFolder Anchor, our business grade file sync solution. And finally, Anne will give us a live product demo of Anchor to show you what the solution looks like and how it works. While we have planned a special Q&A section at the end of today's discussion, questions are strongly encouraged throughout. You may submit questions as we go along. Now, let me introduce Anne. Anne is an instructional designer at eFolder. She has a background in information architecture and instructional technology and has spent the past 10 years working with IT firms. Anne has experience as a SharePoint architect and worked as a consultant for SharePoint implementations for about five years. She received her bachelor's from Car Carnegie Mellon University and her master's from the University of Pittsburgh. And she is now a doctoral candidate within Duque, did I say it right? That's correct, yes. Duque University's Instructional Technology Program. And thanks for joining us and welcome. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Great, so um, we'll get right into it. What is SharePoint? I'm sure most of us have heard of SharePoint, but to review, SharePoint is a document management platform from Microsoft that first launched in 2001. SharePoint was a solution that's ahead of its time because it has many functions and capabilities, and it actually continues to be a market-leading solution because it's considered very secure and versatile. It is a platform where organizations can host all their biz business documents and files for internal access. The platform makes it really easy to share files within a company because all documents could be accessed from an organization SharePoint web-based platform. SharePoint also has features that make it really easy for people to collaborate on documents together. Another big part of SharePoint are sites. In SharePoint, you can create different websites, whether it's an external company website or an internal team site. It can basically act as a company's private network, also called an intranet. In this private network, company-wide documents can be shared with everyone in the company, or each department can have their own site where they can share department files and information. The platform can also be used as an extranet where external users can connect with the network and access certain information if they have the proper permission. Traditionally, SharePoint has always been deployed on-premises, mostly by mid-sized or larger businesses. We refer to SharePoint servers of an organization as a SharePoint farm. It's a pretty significant deployment that, in most cases, third-party experts are needed for consultation, configuration, and implementation. Um, eFolder actually has a partner, Centrix IT, who shared with us that it takes about 6 to 12 months for their clients in the life science, life science industry to fully implement SharePoint. So it's a pretty big effort to get started, and that's because SharePoint is highly customizable. There are a lot of functions, add-ins, and apps in SharePoint, so organizations can customize their deployments to the needs of their businesses. There are currently three versions of the traditional on-premises SharePoint, a 2007, 2010, and 2013 version. In 2013, along with the newest version of SharePoint on-premises, Microsoft also launched SharePoint Online, which is a cloud-based version of SharePoint. SharePoint Online is hosted on Microsoft Cloud and is part of Office 365, which is Microsoft Cloud-based suite offering. So unlike upgrading from SharePoint 2010 to the 2013 on-premises version, SharePoint Online is actually not an upgrade from its previous version. In fact, SharePoint Online is almost like an entirely different service. It is meant to be an out-of-the-box solution suitable for smaller businesses because it requires little implementation and configuration. So um, I just want to show you here uh, 
data can be accessed from SharePoint from one web interface. And uh, this is what it looks like. So here's a screenshot. So now I want to go over some of the pros of SharePoint. One of the main factors that has made SharePoint successful is that it is a secure solution that can solve so many different problems for businesses. It is extremely versatile in that it can be websites where teams or the entire company go in order to get information. It can also be a file sharing service, a collaboration tool, or a central repository where company files are maintained in a logical system. And it's made by Microsoft, so it has deep integrations with Microsoft Office products like Word and Excel. Um, SharePoint also has an app store, so there are a bunch of apps companies can add to their SharePoint deployment that will help with specific functions. All the different apps available make SharePoint highly customizable. And if an organization really needs to, they can also develop their own apps to help with specific functions. The launch of SharePoint Online in 2013 has also made it possible for smaller businesses with limited IT resources to utilize SharePoint as a file sharing and collaboration platform. So SharePoint is very useful, but there are also disadvantages as well. One of the biggest downsides of SharePoint is that the on-premises full-featured version is very costly to implement due to its complexity. So companies will usually, or even MSPs, will usually have to hire an expert or consultant, driving up the deployment costs in addition to licensing fees and hardware purchases. It's also very high maintenance. Hardware needs to be updated over time, and if we also consider the time MSP than maintaining the platform, it really creates a barrier for smaller businesses from using this service. Another problem we are seeing is that companies who are using the traditional on-premises version of SharePoint can't migrate to the cloud. The traditional version of SharePoint is not cloud-enabled, and SharePoint Online is. So some companies with a traditional deployment can't move to SharePoint Online because their current deployment is so complex and heavily customized. So if they move to the simpler version of SharePoint Online, they will likely lose those customizations. And of course, there are those who are using SharePoint, and of course, those who are using SharePoint Online have very limited customization available to them because it's meant to be an out-of-the-box solution. SharePoint is also lacking when it comes to mobility and enabling users to work or collaborate on the go. This is something we'll discuss further down in the presentation. But overall, SharePoint is robust and useful, but the way people work are changing, and in some ways, SharePoint isn't exactly keeping up. So now let's go over what Business Grade File Sync is. Business Grade File Sync is a new generation of service businesses have been using for file sharing and collaboration. I say new generation only because SharePoint dates all the way back to 2001. But really, File Sync has been around for at least seven or eight years now. File Sync and Share Solutions were first made popular by Dropbox, who created a file hosting platform for consumers to manage documents and files in place of USB drives. Shortly after, solution providers started developing business-grade versions of File Sync. And the difference between consumer-grade and business-grade File Sync is that business-grade File Sync is feature-rich and highly secure. Like SharePoint, business-grade File Sync can be used for file hosting, file sharing, and collaboration. It is built with the mobile workforce in mind. Many of these services have a mobile application version and a desktop agent, making it easy for users to access documents when they are outside of the office using laptops, tablets, and smartphones. Business Grade File Sync is designed to be an out-of-the-box solution that requires little training and implementation. So it's a solution that businesses can easily adopt. Impl implementing Business Grade File Sync is as easy as installing a desktop agent or downloading the mobile application, and users should be good to go. A secure Business Grade File Sync should offer military-grade encryption and offer secure ways to share files, such as two-factor authentication or secure share links. These solutions often also have deep, rich administrative features, giving MSPs visibility into how files are being accessed and the ability to control how certain files are being shared. Um, in addition, Business Gray File Sync generally offers flexibility and deployment options. So organizations can usually choose to be hosted in a public cloud or in a private cloud. Um, we will also go over these options further in detail later in the presentation. 
So here is a screenshot of the desktop agent of a business rate file sync solution. Accessing files is as easy as clicking on an icon as if you're opening a folder on the computer. Sorry. Just wanna Sorry, the screenshot's not showing, but um, it will be in a slide later in the presentation. So now we will go over some of the factors that MSP should consider when choosing a document management solution. We've broken them down to mobility and accessibility, ease of use, cost, and types of deployment. So mobility and access Accessibility go hand in hand and is probably one of the biggest factors MSP should consider. In recent years, the workforce of information workers is becoming more and more mobile and companies are allowing employees to bring their own devices to work. What this means is that employees are able to work from anywhere at any time, including at their home offices, during their commute, or at cafes and other public establishments. In many of these cases, when employees are working outside of the office, they are using either their smartphones, tablets, or laptops. A recent Forrester survey found that 48% of workers work on their smartphones at least once a week and 21% on their tablets at least once a week. So when choosing a file sharing solution, it's important to think about whether your clients will be accessing documents when they are out of the office using their mobile devices. Something that Business Rate File Sync does really well is that the solution makes it really simple for users to open, edit, and share documents on the go using mobile app versions of the service. Both SharePoint on-premises and SharePoint online, on the other hand, can only be accessed through a complex web interface. Sure, you can access it through the web application on your smartphone or tablet, but the layout is not mobile friendly. Files are also less accessible from outside of the office if a company is deploying traditional SharePoint on-premises. The traditional full-featured version is not cloud-enabled, so users will generally have to access the company's SharePoint network using VPN or other complicated setups. And would you agree with what we just discussed here in terms of mobility and accessibility? Absolutely, and those are great points, Carmen. Um, and just to share a few examples, um, <clears throat> as you said, SharePoint can be accessed through mobile apps, um, but as you said, it is kind of a clunky experience in a number of ways. As an example, um, when I was asked to help users set up mobile access to SharePoint sites, it often got a little dicey. So first of all, some sites are set up to automatically display a mobile view for users, and others had to be specifically configured through administrative settings. So it did get confusing sometimes, even from an administrator standpoint. So I also want to point out that the, de the default SharePoint mobile view really just takes the SharePoint site and reduces it to a list of libraries and lists. So very often, users had to actually be trained on how to use this mobile view. Users who are used to accessing the site in a browser needed to kind of you know, relearn the system, relearn how to access content from a totally different perspective when looking at it through the mobile app. There was a bit of a learning curve involved. Now in contrast, as you said, with most file sharing tools, the mobile app kind of it simply needs to be downloaded. No, no administrative configuration required. And it's a replicate of how users are used to accessing files in their web or through their computer or laptop. It's a very simple, similar view. There's no need to relearn how to use the mobile app, so it's more straightforward for users. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Anne, for sharing that. Um, so let's, now let's move on to our next factor. Um, ease of use is next. Users are not tech savvy, and many emerging mobile applications or business tools are designed with the user in mind. So this means that the solution is simple, easy to use, and requires little training or implementation. So the traditional version of SharePoint is robust and versatile due to its many capabilities, but this also makes it a very complex platform. Not only can it take solution providers months to deploy the solution, but it could also take users weeks or months to become familiar with some of its functionalities. When you hand a powerful tool to your clients, but they have a hard time figuring out how to use it, what can happen is that users don't fully adopt the solution. In many cases, employees will use SharePoint minimally or only take advantage of a small part of its capabilities. Now, SharePoint Online, on the other hand, is an out-of-the-box solution designed to be a one-size-fits-all. So it is much easier for solution 
providers to implement compared to the traditional SharePoint. And since there is minimal customization, it is less complex and therefore it's less difficult for users to adopt. But when it comes to ease of use, Business Grade FileSync is an out-of-the-box solution that is painless for MSPs to implement and easy for users to adopt. The mobile application version and the desktop agent are all designed to simplify the lives of users by making navigation in their system of files easy. Most of the functions are straightforward and take little training for users to understand. And some Business Grade, some business grade FileSync solutions will even have integrations with Microsoft Outlook or other applications that make it easy to share files externally. Um, and do you find what we discussed to be true based on your experience? Absolutely. <clears throat> and I do want to speak to a few of your points and, and provide some examples. You know, just being a consultant, a SharePoint consultant for a number of years, I can absolutely vouch for what you said earlier a few slides back about a typical six to 12 month deployment schedule. Of course, this takes into an account into a number of things, planning, building, collecting, and uploading content. But a lot of time was dedicated to training end users and administrators, as you said, Carmen. And, and I, I always spent a lot, maybe a, two to four weeks working with users on how to best access and interact with the system. So all of these users, all of a sudden, um, you know, were working in this unfamiliar platform. And they had to change their work habits because now they had to upload, they sometimes had to label and tag content and work in this very structured environment. SharePoint was just a different way of life for most users that I worked with. So there was sometimes some pushback um, and a lot of training involved in getting these users to use the system. So again, as we've been saying here, SharePoint really is an excellent platform for you know, larger organizations that require these highly structured and formal document repositories. But for the majority of users I worked with, they always seemed to prefer to work as they usually worked, you know, from their computers, from their devices. And in contrast, as you said, file sharing solutions really meet users where they are. They let users work how they prefer to work, but with those added benefits that the cloud provides behind the scenes. There's definitely less user training involved. Got it. Great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so now we'll talk about cost. Um, SharePoint is a robust platform and a Microsoft product, so it is definitely more costly compared to other solutions. But what MSPs and clients usually don't take into consideration is all the hidden costs that come with the service. The price tag really doesn't end at the licensing, licensing fees for SharePoint on-premises. Before deployment, we need to take into account the purchase of hardware and especially the cost of implementation. To have SharePoint properly configured to the needs of a client's organization, a lot of times MSPs need to bring in the help of a SharePoint expert or consultant to help with configuration or building out different integrations. A recent analysis revealed that implementation labor alone can cost upwards of $7,500 for just a 250 users deployment of SharePoint Online. So that's only for SharePoint Online. The implementation labor cost for the traditional on-premises SharePoint is probably going to be much more than that. After implementation, IT providers will need to spend time and resources maintaining both the platform and the hardware. And these costs will also be passed on to the clients as well. When it comes to SharePoint Online and Business Grade FileSync, the cost is much more straightforward since they are ready to use solutions that require little configuration or maintenance. Pricing model for MSPs is usually per user per month, and MSPs can package and price it however they want. But the pricing will still be very straightforward to clients. I do want to mention for SharePoint Online, companies do have the option to pay for additional add-on services. And is there anything you'd like to add here in terms of cost? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It was certainly expensive um, when I was working in SharePoint. Expensive up front, expensive ongoing, like you said. And it, it really is hard to pin down the actual total cost of SharePoint. I, I um, have to say that I'm still trying to figure out the licensing models. Um, and, and additionally, and this goes to your point of continual maintenance costs, there was always a need, it seems like, to appoint an outside third party to consult and to help us kind of manage the system at various levels. And of course, you know, because SharePoint Online is, is a little simpler and less complex, as you said, it was less costly to maintain and to run. But for the most part, if an organization was really looking to take advantage of SharePoint's full offering, whether it was an on-premise deployment or an, a SharePoint Online deployment, it really took a lot of time and, and energy to configure, set up, and support. Now, as a consultant, I spent a lot of time, as I said, training these, these SharePoint administrators 
reviewing best practices, and preparing to support the site for their users. Um, so that included uh, managing permissions, supporting the users, cleaning up the site, maintaining workflows. These are all very complex and time-consuming tasks. Um, and in contrast, as you said earlier, file sharing solutions are, are, are definitely more straightforward to implement and maintain, and definitely require less resources during and after Im implementation. So um, there's definitely absolutely a cost difference there. Um, you know, you're not taking as much time and resources, and this absolutely lowers costs at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so the last factor we should consider is the type of deployment your clients need. In the traditional full-featured version of SharePoint, um, it's only available on-premises, and it is not cloud-enabled. So with the traditional SharePoint deployment, clients have full control and ownership over data and infrastructure. Some clients, depending on the industry they're in, they may be bound by certain regulations that limit how they store their data. Healthcare or government are some of these examples. And although with this deployment, deployment since it is not cloud-enabled, if users need to access files while they are out of the office, they will need to use a VPN or other complicated setup in order to access the private network of the company. This can be unreliable, but if a client wants their uh, IT providers to manage their own infrastructure and employees don't often work remotely, then this could be a good solution. If clients want the ease of use and mobility that comes with using the cloud, but prefer or need the security of a private infrastructure, then SharePoint Online and Business Grade FileSync offer private cloud deployment options. Then this means that your client's file sharing service can be hosted in their own infrastructure or in a designated private infrastructure of an MSP. So this way, clients still have control of their data, but they can still gain the productivity benefits of a cloud-enabled service. If clients want to be in the cloud and doesn't mind sharing an infrastructure with other companies, SharePoint Online and Business Grade FileSync both offer public cloud options as well. Um, in public cloud options, data is hosted in the solution provider's cloud, such as the Microsoft Cloud. And uh, in this cloud hosting option, MSPs will not need to maintain the infrastructure. So any comments here, Anne? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right when, when, you know, you're kind of suggesting here that organizations really need to weigh the, the features they need against the, the importance of accessibility and usability. Um, and this all comes down to individual needs of an organization, of course. But as an, a consultant, we were always working with organizations to try to come up with a deployment plan that best met their needs. That a lot of time was spent kind of trying to figure out how to balance that. There were many organizations that required an on-premise deployment of SharePoint because, you know, as you said, they need that full control of their data. Or, or some of them wanted very complex integration options that really can only happen on an on-premise deployment. So for the most part, if an organization wanted to get the most out of SharePoint, that includes um, integration options, customized workflows, um, heavily customized workflows, or business analytics behind the scenes, they had to pay the full cost associated with the on-premise deployment. Um, but I'll also share that this option was a bit overblown. I have to say I would often see situations where we would deploy this and there was a lot of pushback from users. They, <clears throat> you know, you have to take into consideration whether users want to change the way they work to get those full benefits from an on-premise deployment. And on the other hand, if you and your user base are looking for a simpler way to work while keeping everything synchronized and protected, it, it might be better to give users a more intuitive but still comprehensive tool that lets employees work the way they want to work, the way they're used to working. Yep, that's right. Great, thank you. Um, so now to review, uh, for SharePoint on-premises, which is the 2007, 2010, and 2013 uh, full-featured version, the only deployment option available is the on-premises deployment. Since these versions aren't cloud-enabled, employees who want to work remotely will need to connect to the company's network using VPN or other complicated setups. These versions do have all the features and customization SharePoint offers, but can be very costly to implement and maintain. So with this type of SharePoint deployment, it can be hard for companies to migrate to SharePoint Online if a company's deployment is heavily customized. Um, SharePoint Online, which came out in 2013, can be deployed on-premises or hosted in the public cloud. 
SharePoint Online is a cloud-based um, deployment, so no VPN connection is required to remotely access files, no matter how it is deployed. It is lacking mobility features, so it can be a bit cumbersome for users to access files while using a smartphone or a tablet. But it is an out-of-the-box solution, so little implementation is required of IT providers. Therefore, it costs less to deploy compared to traditional SharePoint. But because it's an out-of-the-box solution, there's minimal customizations available for this version of SharePoint. Business grade file sync can also be deployed on premises or hosted in the public cloud. The solution does have a mobile application and a desktop agent, making it sim simple for users to access data on any device while on the go. It's also an out-of-the-box solution that requires little training and implementation, so the costs for MSPs and clients are typically very straightforward. So now that we've gone over what SharePoint and Business Grade File Sync are and the factors MSP should consider when choosing a solution, I want to introduce eFolder Anchor. eFolder Anchor is a Business Grade File Sync solution that makes it really easy for clients to share files and collaborate on projects anywhere and anytime without compromising security and control. Anchor also makes collaboration easy with features like team shares, which allows for different departments to have their team-specific folders, and file locking, which ensures that only one user is editing a document at a time to prevent any overwriting. Um, so this was the screenshot that didn't show up earlier. Um, it's a screenshot of Anchor's desktop agent. The Sync folder on the user's primary desktop become the repository for all of the user's work products. The personal sync folder and team shares are accessed here. Any new content or edits is automatic, automatically synced to the cloud and other devices. And lastly, from any web browser, the user may also, actually, I'm sorry, we're uh, talking about smartphone access here. Smartphone access is key since there are currently 96.2 million mobile workers in the United States. Um, users can access, share, and even edit documents right from their mobile devices, and this is what the application looks like on mobile devices. Um, so there are also multiple ways to securely share files using Anchor. Files can be shared using public share links, um, the secure share feature, which requires guests to log in, and Anchor can even Anchor even has a plugin on Microsoft Outlook, which allows users to securely send documents from Anchor directly from within the Outlook application. Um, a traditional file server usually requires employees to use VPN or FTP to access the network, making it difficult for mobile employees to access files from outside of the office. Anchor has a feature called file server enablement. So for companies who wish to continue to use their file server but want the benefits of the cloud, um, file server enablement allows all the data from a file server to be mapped to team shares and then synced to the cloud. Files are synced in real time and remote users are then empowered with access to all key data even on their mobile devices without having to use VPN or FTP. This improves employee productivity and en enables mobile or anywhere access to the file server. Um, so at this time, let me check to see if any questions have come in before we get into our live walkthrough of Anchor. So, Anne, we have a question here from David. Maybe you could help us answer this. Sure. Um, his question is, can SharePoint sync on-premises file servers to the cloud, and then users can access from either one local file server or the cloud synced file? So with SharePoint, for the most part, you're, gonna, you're going to have to take content um, from your file server and upload it into SharePoint. So you actually have to take it out, you could collect content, and that was a lot of what we did as, as consultants was figuring out where content was. Sometimes it was on local machines, sometimes it was on file servers, and we would gather all of that content and actually migrate it into SharePoint, and that was a tremendous effort. Um, and then once it's in there, of course, it's, it's in there. <laughs> so um, that's where um, Anchor really helps, is that you can actually just, 
use your existing file server, do those quick mappings, and keep working the way you're working. You're not actually moving your content and getting it stuck in this separate system. Yeah, exactly. Great, thank you. Um, so I think now we can, and we can go ahead and uh, do our product demo now. Do you want to go ahead and do that? Sure thing. And I am um, going to, let's see, I'm going to change presenters really quickly. Yes. So I've just made you the presenter. Wonderful. OK. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. I can see Okay. You. OK, so um, I'm going to do a quick 10-minute demo, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet. And if af at the end you want to see information that I didn't actually have time to show you, we can absolutely revisit if you need to. So my goal here is to show you the system from two perspectives, um, the administrative side of things and the end user side of things, so you can see how it works in a total view. So um, we're going to start here with the administrative web portal, which you can see here on my screen. Um, this is where we manage organizations, data, and user accounts. And of course, only admins have access to the administrative web portal. Now, when you first log in, you'll see this left-hand navigation bar here. And that represents a parent-child hierarchy of organizations and sub-organizations. Now, an organization might be a customer, a group, or a department, really any entity that you want to define. A sub-organization. Um, would be a sub-entity that exists below the parent organization. And you can configure these organizations and sub-organizations to have different settings while still maintaining a relationship within the system. So you can really see how the system allows for a scalable, flexible, multi-tenant environment. You can also see when you first log in, this is the main landing page. This is what we call the dashboard. The dashboard shows a great snapshot of activity to help you manage things. And because we're at the top level, it's showing a totaled roll-up view of the organizations and sub-organizations below it. And you can, of course, use that left-hand navigation bar to drill down if necessary. And you can see at the top level here we have some tabs. These tabs let you configure and manage the organization that's currently selected. So let's take a quick look at the Settings tab to get started here. Just as it sounds, the Settings tab allows you to um, define and configure settings for the organization, including general settings here. Um, like you know the URL, the name, localization settings. It also lets you define policies related to data or user settings. It lets you turn on and off certain features. Um, it's a very simple and straightforward process. You can also define an email server for outbound emails, or you can use our default email server um, if you're using the SAS model. And you can define email templates. You can also set up an authentication source um, any LDAP authentication source like Active Directory. Um, and then you can also integrate with PSA systems like Connect, ConnectWise or Autotask. And you can even set branding settings to really make the system your own. Give it a logo, rename the, the, the tool as you see fit. So let's move on to the Shares tab. So I'm going to, um, I'm sorry, let's start with the Accounts tab. So if I click over the Accounts drop down menu, you can see there's different main types of accounts, and there's guests, and there's groups that you can, where you can define groups of users. But in the Accounts tab, um, you can see existing users, which might have been imported, for example, through Active Directory or manually created. Now, in this tab, you can manage settings for user accounts. You can edit these settings. You can optionally unlink machines meaning that you're remotely wiping data from machines that are registered for user accounts. And of course, you can remove user accounts if necessary and remotely wipe data from all of their machines that they have registered. Um, so let's go ahead and click the Machines tab. This page also lets you control access to the system, but it's giving you a view of individual machines and, and the accounts these machines are registered to. So you un can unlink or remotely wipe data from these um, machines if you need to. And you can very um, you know, quickly manage access to the system as well using this tab. You can also, using this tab, and if I quickly show you here, you can click this Enable Mapping link to turn on file server enablement. That's, where, that's what Carmen was speaking to. This is where you configure file server enablement. Um, you can simply click the Enable Mapping link to configure mapping. Um, and when file server is turned on for a machine, you can very quickly map a folder structure to easily get its data into the system. So we're going to move on to the Shares tab. 
This is where you can manage shared content, including team shares, which are you know, shared folders for groups of subscribers, which Carmen was speaking to earlier. Or you can manage individual shares that the end users have sent. You can actually remove individual shares. You can view downloads. You can see who is shared by and any expiration dates that were set. You can optionally, in the Backups tab, turn on Backups. It's a nice add-on feature. Backups is a nice add-on feature if you want to use it. And it allows you or your end users to quickly create file-level backups for directories that exist outside of the system. So this is a great option for users who might not otherwise you know, take the time to back up certain files and folders on a regular basis. So again, it's kind of a nice backup system. Uh, now these last two tabs, the Activity tab, and the Reports tab allow you to track and monitor activity and data. You can create alerts, um, and you can also to be notified when certain events occur. You can also um, create reoccurring reports in the Reports tab to help you manage activity on a regular basis. So that's what Anchor looks like from an administrator's perspective. Just you know, a quick five-minute overview. Um, so let's take a quick look at what an end user might see after the system is all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to minimize this browser here. And right now we're looking at an end user's machine. So let me go ahead and open up a web browser. Right now we're logged in as Jane Brown. You can see Jane's name up here. As Carmen explained, content that is synchronized to the cloud server can be accessed from a number of different machines and devices depending on subscription rules and preferences. So the web portal is the end user's home base. It's you know, a really comprehensive view of files and folders and shares that belong to the end user. And that includes personal files and folders and team share content. You know, the team share is just as, I'm just going to quickly show you what a team share looks like. It's a folder with two people on it. This is a shared space that Jane has access to. And this is a regular old folder in a regular old file that Jane only has access to. She can share, choose to individually share this content if she needs to on an individual basis. But as an end user, you probably wouldn't visit the web portal on, on a daily basis, but it's the place you go to if you need that advanced functionality, which I'll show you right now. So we're sitting here in the Files tab. Um, you can, of course, quickly create a folder. You can upload files here. And you can search for file names if you need to. To the right of the search bar, you're going to see these three buttons. Um, these three buttons <clears throat> are really going to help you. They're going to help you restore files and folders in the case of an emergency. Um, so for example, if I click the Show Deleted button, you can see that any items that Jane has deleted um, they're currently showed up in a grayed, gray view, grayed out view, <clears throat> and you can, she can actually restore these files and folders if she wants to. I'm going to go ahead and hide these deleted items. <clears throat> but this is a huge benefit because you have a plan B in case something happens to a file or folder. You can also right click a file or folder to access additional features. For example, you can click the revisions button to see revisions. The system's actually going to capture each and every, every version <clears throat> of a document and allows the end user to download a version to view it if they want to or actually restore an older version if necessary. So again, there's a lot of safety nets in here when you're working with an anchor. Um, here's the Shares tab. This is where you'll see a listing of anything that's shared for this user. She can actually expand all of her team shares and turn off syncing of content to her local machine if she wants to. She can see a quick view of items that she shared. Um, for example, who viewed the items, who downloaded them. So she can really get an understanding of who is actually accessing this content. And she can remove these share links if she needs to. And also, if you take a look at these file reports in the activity tab, um, this is very similar to um, how the administrators can actually monitor content. It, it, end users can monitor activity as well. So for example, if I click the activity log, you can see very granular options for understanding what's happening with your personal and your shared content. For example, if you want to see really quickly who deleted anything from your marketing team share, you can do that pretty quickly. So that's the, the web portal, and again, this is advanced functionality that you can go to if you need to. Um, but as we discussed, you can also connect different devices and machines, like your computer or your laptop or your mobile device. 
So for the sake of time, just for another minute here or two, I just want to give you one example. I want to show you how you can access your content from your local com computer or your laptop, because as we know, most users conduct their day-to-day -day work activities from their computers. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this browser and go back to Jane's machine. So take a look at this system tray icon. I know um, using um, we're broadcasting here, so it's hard to see this a little bit. But you can see the agent has been installed. And when you install the agent, it creates a special folder called synced folder, although this folder, of course, can be branded by administrators. So let's go ahead and open synced folder. The synced folder is really easy to access because you can always find it in that left-hand navigation bar <clears throat> of Windows Explorer. So it's very quick and easy to access. And you can see that in Jane's case, the same content that exists in the web portal also exists in her synced folder. And this can be changed by permission, um, according to her preferences. But she has access to this same team share, as you can see, represented with this icon overlay. And she also has her personal content here. Um, so any changes she makes in her synced folder will propagate to the cloud server and to any other connected device. And you can see from these green check marks here that her content is currently up to date and it's fully synchronized. And it's very quick and easy to update and synchronize content. It does it automatically, almost immediately. She has access to a right-click context menu. So if she right-clicks the file and points to the sync tool context menu, she can quickly view revisions of the document on the web or create a share link, which Carmen showed you in her slides. So she can configure share settings for individual files and folders. And if you go ahead and click inside a team share, you can see that we have access to the file and folder locking feature. This folder is currently locked by Jane. And this helps improve collaboration. So when Jane locks a file, she is setting read-only permissions for every other subscriber to the team share and giving herself exclusive editing rights until she's finished making her changes. Um, administrators can actually configure team shares so that Word and Excel files automatically lock each time they are launched from the synced folder. Or she can manually lock them by using that right-click context menu and locking it this way. So that's another option she has. So that's my quick 10-minute overview. Um, I'm going to give the controls back to Carmen to see if there's any additional questions or anything oh. else you guys need to see. Is actually, that OK? And, or do you want me to um, keep? Uh, Want me to keep this flying? OK. Uh, yeah, because Andy, she actually asked if we could go back to the dashboard. So maybe we could visit the dashboard and the web portal as we answer sure other questions. Sure thing. Perfect, thank you. Of course. Um, OK, so back to questions. Um, we have one question about file server enablement. Mm -hmm. um, if users are offline accessing files from Anchor, Later on, uh, will the file server be updated? OK, so um, if you're working, so the way I'm interpreting the question, if you're working um, offline, you're not on your computer, and you're not connected to the internet, um, so you, your files aren't currently syncing, um, she can update her files in her local machine. And when she reconnects, yes, that content will synchronize. OK, perfect. Um, so Scott is asking, as an MSP, can we designate a folder to be synced by default? For example, users documents on each end user's computer. Um, um, if, if they can be synchronized. So I, I'm wondering if the question is about selectively syncing content. Is that what that question is about, Carmen? Is that how you're reading that? Hmm. I'm thinking the question might be about uh, whether we can set every My Documents folder on every oh. user's computer to sync by default. Um, so your uh, My Documents folder, let me show you this on the end user screen, um, content would have to be actually moved into your sync folder. Um, you can actually set up your documents. If, if you want to turn on file level backups, you can back up um, content, my, the My Documents content if you want to. But um, users really need to be using that synced folder. And anything that's in that synced folder, folder will synchronize um, to the cloud server and across any connected device. Great. OK. So um, Scott also asked, um, you mentioned file locking to prevent multiple people from editing the same document. Conversely, do you support co-authoring so that multiple people can edit the same document at the same time. 
So currently we just support um, read-only access one user at a time, but that is something that's coming up down the road. Um, so that's something to look for very much in the new, it's on the roadmap very much in a new, we have a few options related to that kind of feature coming up down the road. Um, but right now file locking is user per user um, being able to um, set read-only permissions and then allowing that one person to make changes. Okay, great. And let's see. So Vinne is asking, our clients are concerned about security and Anchor as compared to Microsoft. Um, and could you speak a little bit to uh, Anchor security? Absolutely. Um, Anchor um, um, utilizes 256-bit AEX. Uh, I'm sorry, AES encryption. It's very safe. We use top-notch security. Um, um, all of our servers are, are safe. And, and I do suggest that you go ahead and take a look at our knowledge base articles, which actually map out exactly which technologies we use to protect content. But it's incredibly safe. It's top-notch. Um, and um, yeah, I, 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 you can absolutely um, trust that Anchor data is being safely encrypted and protected. Yeah, and I also want to add that um, Anchor is actually HIPAA compliant. So mm -hmm. um, if you have clients in the healthcare industry, um, eFolder will sign a business associates agreement. Absolutely. Great point. Um, okay, and Roger brought up that um, SharePoint and OneDrive for business are included as part of an Office 365 business package. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the problem he's experiencing is that it's hard to compete on price with Office 365 since they both do pretty much the same thing and integrate tightly in Office apps. Um, mm -hmm. What I want to bring up, Roger, is that we actually have a webinar this Thursday called uh, Beating the Competition, Selling Against mm -hmm. OneDrive. Mm -hmm. And an e-folder partner is going to come on and mm -hmm. share with us his success in getting clients to move away from OneDrive, which is included in Office 365 and adopt Anchor instead. So, uh, you know, please join us for this webinar and hopefully it can answer your question. Um, so at this time, I think we've answered most of the questions. So, uh, Anne, maybe you could make me the presenter once again. Sure thing. One second here. Okay, you should be all set. Perfect, thank you. Um, so I want to thank everyone for joining us today, and especially Anne for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Um, for anyone on the line who wishes to give Anchor a try, we do offer a 21-day trial, and you can access the trial at www.efolder.net slash free dash trial. Um, if you have any questions after this webinar, feel free to email me and I'd be happy to try and answer them. Um, as a reminder, the slides and recording for this webinar will be sent out shortly. So uh, thank you everyone again. I hope you all have a good day.